Um, what you have is a question. Look around, make sure that somebody else hasn't already asked that question. Um, and then send it to the appropriate guy. That's important. This is not the bugs list. It's the questions, the users. Now, questions may turn into bugs. But, you know, honestly, most of the time, the question you have isn't a bug, it's that the feature is well documented, maybe that's a bug. Or you're just not doing it. And then, after you've asked your question or found your bug or whatever, you know, if you did post to a mailing list, submit a follow up. <laughs> um, the next person will thank you because if you had this problem or question or issue, somebody else probably did as well. So follow up and say, look, here's how I solve it. Um, this may all sound scary, um, but be humble. Um, yeah, you might look a little stupid asking questions. I've done it. I did just recently. I was in a brand new area that I could open up and ask questions. Try to check pretty lame and obvious, but they should be nice. Like, Please, thank you. I've said that part of my new visit. I want to do it. Here's what I can't do for it. Um, say please, say thank you, be polite. And get this the attitude towards newcomers, newcomers is a key indicator of project maturity and success. Think about that, right? So if you're trying to establish a community around your project, and you're not hopeful and gracious and accommodating to the people who are coming to you trying to use your stuff, um, even though their question may be demo not part, um, if you can't be gracious and accommodating, who's the toughest product to be? The days of the lone wolf, barely heard in her. Um, and a shout out to some of my. Um, Independent ISP friends, um, if you want real support, um, there are companies out there specializing in open source JS and many of them some of the best ones. I mentioned if you hear passing, there are others in search around. So if you do need a list of training, if you need somebody specifically to add a feature, these people are here. Okay. How to get involved. <laughs> Open source is a community thing. I actually put that word on these slides, but that's what it's all about. It's about the community around the project. And you know, as you start to use the project more and get involved, you might want to be part of that community. You might want to help other users, or perhaps you would like to. Uh, you might want to add a feature that you need. You might want to help pay for improvements. Um, you might want to make friends and new roles. As types of involvement, you can be a user, a developer, a sponsor, or you can be an advocate. So let's look at each one of those four roles right now. As a user, you should know that the cardinality of users is much greater than the cardinality of developers. There are way more users out there than developers. Premise one. Premise two, docs lag code. That means the documentation is always out of date. It's just a fact. It's just the way you put it on. Sorry. Premise three, um, we're not all programmers. So if you add all these things together, what you get is the fact that there are users out there who are not programmers but can make useful contributions. Specifically, users are in just as good, if not in many cases, better position to provide the documentation than the developers. And I'm talking about the documentation here, I'm talking about tip sheets, how to's, formal manuals like the history one we saw the other day, um, participate in APQs, um, help on web scrubs, right? Um, testing, users sometimes do a much better job of testing than developers. We mm -hmm. all know that, all learn that. Um, developers probably know who the bugs are, where it's so much to avoid, this is you know, right? Users don't know that their users have been free. They're not shocked. They're going to say, hey, you know, your space limit and knowledge doesn't work. <laughs> but, you know. So, as a user, there are valuable contributions to be made. I guess that's the theme here. Just because you're not a C sharp hacker or a Python hacker, there's lots of stuff you can do. 
If you are a developer, um, here's a couple things you need to know. Um, this community that I'm speaking of is very much a meritocracy. It's based on deeds. It's also based on, it's also not based on titles. Uh, it's not based on religion, sexual orientation, or anything else. Because oftentimes all you have is some brand new religion and you have no idea what the expression is. It's entirely based on deeds. It's as anonymous as you can get. So keep that in mind. Be humble. And know that you're, you will be rewarded and recognized for your work. You will work first. As a developer who leads the new project, make sure you understand what the point goals and intents are. So, you know, if I came in and told you, um, those of you who are looking at your master's or PhDs, if I came in and say, hey, you're doing it all wrong, that is so easy to me, I'll solve that problem. 20 years ago. Um, Step back and make sure you really understand what the project is before you start making new assertions. Who's the project for? What's motivating the project leads? Their goals may be totally different from yours. They may not try to build a building a really, really fast human based system. They may be trying to build a building that's more broadly out. Which is what you can say with the You can then say, hey, I need to put some hydro over this thing. That's right. This project. Maybe you can use it for pieces of paper, but we're really focusing on petrol and the belt. Be aware of what motivates the problem in those that are And be aware of cultural norms. Um, somebody calls this the fork or shots to the list. Which you could have heard earlier, you talked about the early races on the same line, or the early races on the new line. <laughs> <laughs> You know, be sensitive to them. They've already gotten an established community really. Speaking of force, um, fork is also used as a term of uh, you take an open source project, copy all the source code here, and then you go out and start building your own thing, and you start publishing it on the web. And the reason you do that, generally, people do that in these days because they pull down this thing and they're they disagree with some fundamental issue, whether it's reality or not. But the people running this project now, do you want to do it right away? Um, forking is almost inevitable. The history of open source has shown that it's considered a nuclear option. No one will thank you. There are a few limited cases where it makes sense, specifically where you've got something like you know, this project is specifically dedicated to the higher world. I want to move more towards something else. And furthermore, I feel that I can develop a community around this and I'm going to alienate those people. Just remember, the men who fork that source base are not going to be able to move patches and features back in the past. I can tell you, though, as somebody who's getting into it for the first time, yeah, you should make your own code, but don't expect it to be maintained. Well, you're just playing with that stuff. I would have been thinking about that side of the platform that I had mentioned, but he says the fork, the side of the fork is the greatest weapon against tyranny. The yes. greatest defense yeah. against tyranny. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, the leaders of projects um, are often referred to as dictators, benevolent dictators. Um, <laughs> Very long, um, very frequent. The Think of what that means with the fork option. So they're dictator. Uh, what I say goes, at the end of the day, you can all stretch your communities, but I'm in charge of this I'm saying I'm going this way. Um, you guys have the power to come back and say, you know what? You just don't make your take your foot in the whole sense. That keeps me as a Okay, third role is the sponsor. Um, there are three things you can do as a sponsor to help move open source projects along. Uh, you can offer what's called a bounty, which is money offered for a specific bug fix or an update. Um, you can give discretionary funding or it's called open funding. Here's some money. Michael, I really like the stuff you're doing. Here's a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. So just use it as best you see fit for the good of the project. 
Um, and then in kind support, um, you may have a developer resources. You know what, Michael, I love your project. You know, it so happens that I've got somebody who's going to be working in that area. I've got one of my guys on my team. You know what, I can get in three months and start to work with you. That's a great, great kind of support. Hosting services, um, this is perhaps less important today because there's a lot of free work resources out there that often has people with some sort of data to keep their resource repositories. And conferences. You know, you like my project, great, I'm getting plane ticket and I'll come out to the conference and I'll get a plane ticket and I'll have it and spend the time sitting outside and walking into a conversation too. That's a very good kind of support for people like these. I think this happens. So these are ways that you can, with relatively little effort on your part, finally the open source uh, geospatial foundation for open source advocacy. Voice Chain started five years ago. Uh, it's an organization of developers and users in the geo world dedicated to furthering the goals of open source technology for developing and supporting binary applications like this. These are some of the major projects that live under the OSG umbrella, map server, map value, graphs, features, and here's OSGO provides common hosting infrastructure from legal support from the very community for all of us. So we independently by people. They all live in the industry. It's not just about writing code though. The OSGO is heavily involved in the educational curricula, um, pushing open source into courses. Um, the OSGO provides speaking conferences and trade shows, liaisons with state organizations, Voice Geo and EC work well together, uh, promotion of uh, data initiatives, um, and local user groups. I'm one of the organizations of our user in Seattle, and we have 20 to 30 people show up every month. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right, finally, we agree that open source is a good thing. You found the project you need, you've gotten help, it's building, it's working. Mm -hmm. Nice enough to send some money back to the project. What's the big deal? Why are some people so passionate about this stuff? Is it any fun in any way? What possible economic justification is there for all these people to do all this? The short answer is I don't think so. I've been doing this for 20 years now, in each one of these four roles. People do it for a lot of different reasons. People do it because it's fun, they like to program. People do it because they like recognition of their peers. People do it in the corporate environment because they want to take advantage of stuff that somebody else has already done. So it's not going to make more comments here and the resources to bring for themselves. People do it because they're researchers and they share their results with their peers and their universities. The long answer is that we do this. For every person in the room out here who uses open source, it takes a slightly different reason for this. The cool thing is, it all works. All of these reasons come together in one big, sometimes noisy, but the big fractions of all one big community. And it provides a really good way of doing it. It's very, very different than all the other things in this way. It's not a big accomplishment. This is the way that we do it. Maybe it won't be everything sort of some of the ideas of collaborative work. So there's a couple of major corporations that are using open source within their organization. IBM is not one, but I use it for example. IBM can say, you know what, we're going to make open source, but for all the IBM employees. So in other words, all the people in that 100,000 person organization are working on common projects. Because they recognize that any one team was fine to do just one piece to put them on for certain things. So the open source idea spreads the thing as opposed to And the open source idea has spawned things that said that we can pay you creating problems, crisis problems, and street problems, and different ways of working. I don't understand what the economic justification is. There seems to be just too much. I would like 